Hi, it's Marianne of MW's Designs. Today I've been painting watercolor snowflakes. I like snowflakes as a project because the design possibilities are endless and also snowflakes are so intricate, pretty and sparkly that um, I really like them. These are some that I've already done, and if you like sparkles as much as I do, um, you can put sparkles on your snowflakes. I haven't put snowflake, I haven't put sparkles on all of them, but um, I think they add just kind of an, another nice little touch. I don't know if you can see that um, sparkle on there. Uh, this one also has sparkles. I'll see if I can get that to catch the light so you can see it. Um, I'm going to put these aside so that I can show you what I did to make them. I started with a piece of 140 pound watercolor paper. I wet both sides of the paper with clear water. I do that because with a small piece of paper like this, that will help it stay flat as I'm working on it. If you were using a larger piece of watercolor paper, you might want to tape it down to keep it from buckling and shifting on you while you're working. So there that is wet. And then I'm going to apply the paint. I have a watery mixture of ultramarine blue and viridian. This technique is called wet in wet because I'm applying wet paint to a wet surface and that allows the paint to flow and move around creating a really interesting texture and I like that for the, back, the background of my snowflakes. So get this all colored, more or less. Okay, I'm going to set that aside to dry. Next, I have my hexagon shapes. I've made them in three different sizes, depending on what project you might be wanting to do. You might want to have larger ones or smaller ones. If you have a protractor, um, you can, it's one of those half circle tools that you can use to measure angles. And for a hexagon shape, you need six angles of 60 degrees each. And you can measure that on the protractor. My protractor is missing at the moment, so I can't show you, but I did just happen to have some hexagon shapes that I could use. And if you don't have a protractor, you can look online and find lots of templates of hexagons and you can pick one to print off. So I'm going to use the medium size one and I have my paper that's already dry. I'm going to turn it on the back side. If you wanted to have a double-sided um, item for your design, you could paint both sides. For, for this video, I am just doing one side and I'm tracing it on the back so that I don't have it pencil marks on the front. And I get it cut out. Sometimes I do make snowflakes that I've just drawn um, freehand, but to make a really nice shaped snowflake, I kind of like to use the hexagon. And it might not even be entirely perfect, but um, a little bit closer than it would be if I had done it freehand. Next, I am going to paint, well, a circle in the middle, just so I know where that is. Then, using the same paint as I did for the background, 
I just apply another layer that will be a basic snowflake shape. And it will be just a little darker than the background. I like the contrast that it creates um, for when I apply the white part of my snowflake. This one is just going to be a very simple design so that it doesn't take me too long. But of course, when you're doing yours, you can make them as simple or as complicated as you wish. Okay. And set that one aside to dry and I'll bring out one that I already have dry. When I first was going to do this project, I thought I was going to use white watercolor paint. Um, but what I found, and this is an example of it, the paint doesn't make a really nice dark clear white line, even though white watercolor paint is somewhat opaque. Um, it's, it sinks a little bit into the background and I don't get a nice bold clear line like on for example this one. So I ended up, I could have used acrylic paint but I didn't have any white acrylic paint so instead I decided to use gesso because gesso is basically acrylic paint too. And I didn't want to use any of my good watercolor brushes for it, so I found an old brush that I could use. If, if I use my good watercolor brushes with gesso, um, I might not get it entirely clean afterwards, and then it would wreck my, my brushes for watercolor paint. I, I will still wash out my old brush anyway, but I'm not so worried about getting it um, absolutely clean. I poured out a little bit of my gesso just into a lid and then just using the very tip of the brush, I'm applying the white over my outline and I like the contrast that it gives the white so that it just does stand out a little bit more. It kind of has a blue shadow behind it. And I try to make it um, asymmet or I try to make it as symmetrical as I can because being a snowflake of course you want to have that symmetrical effect. Although Snowflakes are a flexible design. If they're not perfect, it still will look very pretty. And snowflakes are not all, in real life, snowflakes are not always perfect either because sometimes they're melting or a piece will break off for whatever reason and they might not be perfect. Okay. So that's what I did with the brush. Then I used a pointed toothpick to add some other little details. Sometimes I like to add little dots. And you can add fine lines. There's just, as I said, infinite possibilities for doing the designs on snowflakes. You could have diamonds or little circles or pretty much whatever your imagination comes up with. So I will do these dots symmetrically all the way around. And I find that works quite well to use this pointed toothpick. You can get quite a nice fine application 
of your acrylic or your acrylic paint or gesso. Sometimes I like to add lots of little dots. Oop, I missed some of the larger side dots. But the, the very tiny dots just give a more complex design and I think make it look very delicate. So I'm, I really like that effect for a snowflake. Okay, all the way around. And there is my completed snowflake. So I will set that aside. And this year, for the very first time, I decided to do a bullet journal. And I thought the snowflakes would make a good design on my January page, which I made into a double door and or a Dutch door, and I will have to add more um, details fairly soon, I hope, before the end of January. I put a, ba a darker background under my snowflakes to help them show up a little better, so I quite like that. And other things that you could do with snow the snowflakes, uh, one thing I thought I might do is make a mobile or a banner. You could also use them to decorate cards or gift packages. Um, you could use them in scrapbooking, and I'm sure you can even think of more ideas for using them. So that's my project for today. I hope you found it fun and interesting, and maybe you will like to try out some of the ideas. I really enjoyed making mine. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and write me a comment below. I would love to hear what you think of these ideas. Also, if you are not subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and the bell beside it so that you can be notified of any of my upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and see you soon.